a peaceful land until an evil tyrant named Johnny Rochefort took over the land. Ooh, ah, 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 ah. He kept their beautiful queen captive so that no one would feel safe until three brave heroes arrived. Athos, the great sword man, Porthos, the knife wielder, D'Artagnan, the dashing slicer. They made a plan to rescue the queen, but D'Artagnan was young and brash, so he attacked Rochefort first. No! He didn't know how powerful bad guys are. Next was Athos. You need to grow back. No! He didn't know how quick bad guys are. And last was Porthos. He brought the wrong weapon with him. They were no match for Rochefort by themselves. The three brave men remembered that they are strung together, so they joined their swords and proudly said, All for one and one for all. Rochefort thought he could take them, but he was quickly overtaken by the three musketeers. The queen and the kingdom were safe again. Thanks to the three who worked as one. All for one and one for all. And guard. All for one and one for all. Three Musketeers, a uh, uh, pretty great picture of that power of togetherness. Now imagine uh, with me if the Three Musketeers all of a sudden turned their swords on each other and started fighting each other and taking each other out. Well, there would be no... Uh, uh, no rescues take place. There would be no bad guys being stopped. No, no good triumphing at the end. It, it would be, it'd just be a mess if they turned on each other and lost that sense of togetherness, that all for one and one for all. Uh, uh, imagine with me uh, what it would be like if that happened to a, a husband and a wife, uh, towards parents and their kids, uh, towards uh, employees and employers. There's this turning against one another. Uh, in the context of our conversation in this series with this, with this church in Philippians, a local expression of the body of Christ, uh, uh, what it would be like if they turned on each other. If they uh, uh, stopped it moving together and started moving against one another, uh, it would be an absolute terrain wreck. It'd be a disaster. Uh, the the devil would win, and why? Because uh, it going against one another would thwart the mission of bringing the good news of Jesus to those who who don't know Him yet. It would thwart the mission of helping one another grow deeper in their relationship with one another. And Paul was absolutely uh, aware of the incredible devastation if this church who had been so instrumental in partnering with him to get the gospel out would have a breakdown in their togetherness. Because you see, mission success requires togetherness. And if you don't remember anything else today, hold that to your heart. Mission success requires togetherness. Paul knew that. And as we see him over and over again in this letter expressing this need for same-mindedness, oneness, togetherness over and over again, we kind of get the idea that there was a concern in his heart 
that there was something that was driving a lot of this conversation. Um, but we right now are at this, this place where we're looking at this togetherness uh, from the, through the lenses of Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 11. And specifically, we see Paul here addressing uh, some questions. Uh, what is this togetherness rooted in? What's the roots, the foundation of this togetherness? Uh, uh, how, is, how is it revealed when there is togetherness happening? What does that look like, feel like, sound like? And then uh, this question of how is togetherness retained over the long haul? People being people, they're a work in progress. He talked about that in Philippians chapter 1. How is it that imperfect people who are growing can be in that place of togetherness over the long haul, successfully fulfilling that mission of, of getting that good gospel message out? That Jesus died for your sins and by putting your faith in him you have forgiveness of sins and peace with God. That message has to go out. Has to go out. And how can you maintain that togetherness to ensure that the mission does go forward? Well, let's just jump right in and read uh, what Paul had to say here. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ, any comfort from his love, any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others is better than yourself. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave. He was born as a human being. And when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Well, let's just pause after those verses here and unpack this a little bit. What is togetherness rooted in? We go to verse 1, he says, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? And, and it, it, uh, is, is, uh, it would be appropriate to understand those statements as since statements. Uh, since there is encouragement from belonging to Christ, since there is comfort from his love, since there is fellowship in the Spirit, since there is tender, tenderness and compassion in your hearts. Um, the, the language there, uh, it, it, even in a question format, uh, uh, pushes the understanding of this is something that you know that you have. And it is this here in verse 1 that provides the, 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 the foundation, the roots upon which togetherness is, is to grow from. Uh, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? This, this, this being brought into the family of God, is there any encouragement in your heart to know that you belong to Jesus? Any encouragement in your heart of knowing that your sins are forgiven, your guilt and your shame have been nailed to the cross of Jesus? Is there any encouragement in your heart of knowing that you are God's child, that you are, you are a, an ambassador now from heaven, that you are a citizen of heaven, that you are a joint heir with Christ, Christ, that you are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Uh, uh, these, these types of things we understand now uh, uh, are ours. We belong. We are a part of God's family. We are adopted in. We are clothed with the righteousness of Jesus in the courtroom of heaven. We have been declared not guilty. Does that matter to you? 
Does that mean something in your heart? Paul was telling them. He said, well, any comfort from his love? That you are, you are wanted, you are valued, you are treasured, you are loved unconditionally, you are loved immeasurably. God, God puts his statement of priceless upon you because you are the object of his love. Does that comfort you? Any fellowship together in the Spirit when we give our lives to Christ, the Spirit of God dwells within us, empowering us, reminding us of what Jesus has taught. The Spirit of God empowers us, gives us spiritual gifts, gives us strength and wisdom, and it, He binds us all together. You have any fellowship with one another in the Spirit? Uh, are, are your hearts tender and compassionate when you came to Christ and as, as the prophet said you, he's going to take out that heart of stone and he's going to put in that heart of flesh and he's going to write the laws of God upon your heart does that make a difference to you does that mean something to you to have the tenderness and the compassion of God well all of those things are the, are the foundation, are the, the roots from which togetherness grows. It's rooted in Jesus' salvation. Awesome. He says, now, now, now how, do, how do I know that this togetherness is in play? How do I, what do I see? What do I look around in, in this fellowship? And here in, in this context, a, a local expression of the body of Christ in this city of Philippi. How, did, how would they know? And so Paul says, well, make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other. Love one another. Work together with one mind and purpose. Not being selfish. Not trying to impress others. Be humble. Think of others as more, more important than yourself. Don't look out for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. And what we see is that togetherness is going to be revealed through harmony. Through harmony. And the beautiful thing about harmony is it doesn't mean that everybody is going to be the exact same thing. That everybody's going to have the exact same passion, desires, gifts, abilities, experiences. No, it's, it's the beauty of the differences brought together by the power of the Holy Spirit in such a way that the song together is more beautiful than the song sung alone. And there will be things being expressed. There will be this agreement of heart, this loving of, appreciating the value of one another, working together with one mind, one purpose, the mind of Christ. We're listening, we're following, we're obeying with this purpose to successfully, through the power of the Holy Spirit, advance the kingdom of God. That, that, that good news message goes out and people hear and believe and are, and are brought in to the fellowship and are encouraged to grow one another moving forward in their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It isn't a place where people are proud, arrogant, they are humble. You'll see humility, people putting other people ahead of themselves. Uh, everyone will be looking up to each other, valuing them taking care to note their interests, their concerns, and be quick to minister to them. This is harmony. And when harmony is in play, togetherness is in play. And when togetherness is in play, the mission is moving forward. As you see, mission success requires togetherness. It will be absolute disaster if if this body, the individual members turn on each other and it's instead of all for one, it's all against all. And it is a disaster. And the devil wins and the mission is thwarted. No, mission success requires togetherness. In verse 
5 through 11. Well, Paul, give us some insight. How is it that this togetherness can be retained or, or preserved over time, over the long run? What has to happen? What must be going on? You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Each person will be in this place where they are, are embracing Jesus' attitude. He didn't, didn't demand his high privilege. He, he, he gave it up. He, he took the humble position of a slave. He served. He gave. He sacrificed. He laid himself down for others. And he said, I didn't come to, to be served. I've come to serve. That's why I'm here. And that as God's people, Jesus' followers, come to this place of embracing the same attitude. I'm not here to be served. I'm not here for people to, to, to do and say what I want and give me what I want. And all. No, 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 I am here to give. I'm here to sacrifice. I'm here to serve. And in that place, with that attitude in place, harmony is preserved togetherness togetherness it, it it holds fast over time for all that that are in this place of holding on to the mind of Christ do we have this mind today are we in that place of service and sacrifice it must be in place in our life and it must be in place in everybody else's life in a local expression of the body of Christ, or there will be major problems. Mission success requires togetherness. This past weekend, I had the privilege of uh, going fishing with the men here from church, and wow, we just had a great time. It, it turned into a full-fledged catching trip uh, as we filled the uh, freezer with trout, um, uh, a, a special a special moment for me over the course of the weekend. There were actually several of them, I should say. Um, a Saturday uh, evening, right before we left um, Sunday morning, uh, my my brother and his son had come down the same weekend to the same place so that we would get some time together. And uh, I was I was there. My dad came with us, and we just had a fantastic time. A little. Tricky getting him in and out of the boat at 82 years old, but, but he did just fine and uh, probably caught a lot more than I did. Uh, but we, uh, after our evening session uh, with, our, with our group, which another special moment, uh, Dad and I went to the cabin where my brother was staying with my nephew. And uh, we came in and met all my brother's friends and we're talking and hanging out and and asking questions, and, and as it turns out, uh, all of us, pretty much, I think, all of us there were all, all belonged to Christ. We were all together in, in Christ. And so it didn't take very long at all for our conversation to move from, hey, what's your name, hey, what do you do, to a conversation of testimony of the power of Jesus, testimony of changed lives, a testimony of, of, of changes in, in our own lives and what was God doing in and around our little worlds. And, and it was an incredible time of, of praise, an incredible time of testimony. And so it was starting to get a little bit late. We decided that we were going to go uh, we had better get to bed, and, and, and we got together, this whole group of us, myself and my dad, my brother, my nephew, and, and my, my brother's friends, and we just had this incredible prayer time together. And we were, we were asking God to move in a powerful way in the world around us and in the lives of the people that we know and we love, and, and we were just enjoying this deep, deep connection with one another in prayer and the, and the power of the Holy Spirit in that place. So special, so wonderful. Why? Because there was a togetherness. Togetherness uh, within the body of Christ. There was that encouragement from belonging to Christ. There was a comfort of His love, the fellowship that we had together in the Spirit. Truly beautiful to experience. 
And it is precisely that experience that, that, that is to be the hallmark of Jesus' followers and the local expressions of the body of Christ, just like we see here in this particular group uh, gathered in the city of Philippi. If we allow our relationships to drift apart, if we allow our relationships to slide into an unhealthy status, there, there will be no togetherness and there will be mission fail because mission success requires togetherness. So the challenges coming out of, of this word uh, I, I think are pretty clear. The first one is this. I, I challenge you and I challenge myself to ask God to show us if there are any unhealthy relationships in our life and then act in a biblical manner to address it. If we're, if we're listening today and we have an incredible amount of unhealthy going between us and our spouse, it's time to act. It's time to get help. It's time to gather people around. That, that unhealthy status short circuits togetherness. And if families, husbands and wives, get out, turn the swords on one another, kids and parents turn the swords on each other, it's trouble. Mission fail. It's time to get help. And within the local expression of the body of Christ uh, that we would call Fall Creek, if there are any, in any people in our, in our fellowship that, that we know there's a drift, we know there's an unhealthy tension uh, between us and them, act whatever it takes, find resolution, get help, reconcile, forgive, turn the other cheek, we, we have to come together, be in that place of togetherness so that the mission can be advanced of leading others to come to know Jesus and grow in their relationship with him. It requires oneness. It requires togetherness. And that will be revealed through harmony, protected by the mind of Christ that we all embrace empowered by the Holy Spirit. A second thing that is so important at the very first phrase that he says here in this section, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? He says, since you belong to Christ. Now that's a great question that we need to ask ourselves. Do we belong to Jesus? Make sure that we are in Christ. Make sure that we have come to a place of, of humbly recognizing our need for a Savior and saying yes to Jesus. Have we done that? Do we know that we are, are His? Elsewhere in some of the letters, he says, take time to examine yourself to make sure that you are in the faith. Be sure that you know Jesus, that he's your Lord, that he's your Savior, that your life belongs to him, that you know the encouragement of what it means to be a part of the family of God. And if, and if you are unsure about that, I would love to talk with you about that decision to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Please reach out to me. This is that, this is that invitation to, to, to come to know him. And I encourage you, reach out to me. There'd be nothing that would give me more joy than to encourage you in entering into and moving forward in your relationship with Jesus. Make sure that you belong to Him. Make sure. That, so that encouragement from belonging to Him then becomes uh, the, the roots from which this togetherness can grow and, and produce that harmony that leads to mission success and then I want to encourage you also intentionally point other people to Jesus pray for that opportunity to tell one person every day the the good news message that Jesus died on the cross for their sins and putting their faith and trust in him they can have forgiveness of sins and peace with God the knowledge that heaven is their destiny this news is too good to keep to ourselves 
It has to be shared. Pray for an opportunity to do that so that others can be brought into the family of God. That, and that is the mission to see others move from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Intentionally, intentionally point others to Jesus. And mission success in that way requires that we be together. Friends, think about this for a minute. We have the opportunity to be an active part of the most powerful force on planet Earth. Jesus' church. And it is the most powerful force on planet Earth for two reasons. It's been entrusted with the gospel of Jesus Christ, the only message only message that leads to eternal salvation to all who would believe. And it is also the most powerful force on planet Earth because it is the only one who is empowered by God himself, the Holy Spirit. And as, and as Jesus' followers, the body of Christ, are coming together and they are loving one another, living in harmony. The kingdom of God forcefully advances. And guess what? Not even the gates of hell can stand against it. It's the most powerful force on planet earth. Friends, you and I, we, we have been invited to be a part. We have a part to play in that fellowship that nobody else can, and we need each other. And this is why the writer of Hebrews says, do not, do not forsake the assembling one with another as some are in the habit of doing. No, we need each other to spur one another on to love and good deeds, to link arms, to see the church advance the body of Christ, move forward in power, that we could be Jesus' church, seeing people move from, from hopelessness to eternal hope, seeing lives transformed, the broken healed, marriages, marriages restored, addictions broken, to see the power of God at display, the miraculous all around us. This is what we are invited into. Oh, I pray, I pray that you and I will step in, will step in and step together in such a way that we get to experience being a part of God's movement in this old world that we live in right here, right now. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And that for everyone who believes in him, they'll not perish, but they'll have everlasting life. And Lord, you want us to be a part of that search and rescue team. Prepare us, I, pr I pray, each and every one of us. Draw us to you. And, and as we are drawn to you, we are drawn to that, that harmony of mind and will and desire. And we are about those things that you are about. And we see the power of God unleashed. Don't let us drift. Don't let us drift. Let us stay in that place of healthy relationship in every arena in our lives. So that your glory is given and that your purposes are fulfilled. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for being here. Just pray that God would bless you, keep you, and I look forward to seeing you all soon.